had derived a hypothesis that space flight would indeed alter both the global gene expression responses of microbial pathogens and it would also alter their virulence or disease causing properties. We had a lot of evidence which really suggested that space flight could do something similarly but yet do, do it in a different way as well because the bioreactors don't simulate all aspects of space flight. And now we wanted to see what would real space flight do in terms of providing us with new insights for infectious diseases that we could take that mechanistic insight that we learned from flight and then translate it into the development of new therapeutics and new biotechnologies that we can use to combat infectious diseases. Um, so that preponderance of evidence we had, which was several years worth of ground-based research, really demonstrated that spaceflight had a real, real tremendous potential to serve as a, an innovative research platform to provide new mechanistic understanding to how pathogens cause infectious disease and then take that information and translate it to the clinical bedside. So we did a lot of ground-based work uh, demonstrating that a spaceflight light condition actually can predispose, can cause a pathogen to become more virulent, can globally change how it's able to survive your immune system. It can survive those stresses better. And that demonstrated a real need to uh, fly a spaceflight experiment because those bioreactors can only simulate aspects of the spaceflight environment. They can't simulate everything. And what was really, really cool too about those ground-based experiments in those special bioreactors is they suggested that the pathogens were causing disease in a different way than when we culture them normally on the ground under conventional conditions. And so that was also exciting as well because it allows us to open new doors to understand how pathogens are causing disease and we desperately need that because we're running out of a lot of treatments to be able to treat some infectious diseases. One thing we knew in the spaceflight paradigm is that um, we were getting all this information that the bugs were causing disease in different ways. And we took a step back and we said, why is that? Because cells didn't evolve in the presence of microgravity, they evolved here on Earth. So it's clear that those pathogenic cells aren't doing something that they could never do before in the spaceline environment. No, that's not the case. They are responding to an environmental signal that they're used to seeing right here on Earth during the natural course of the infectious disease process, but that signal has been masked for some reason because we're growing it here on Earth. And it turns out that there are conditions that are encountered inside the human body that a pathogen experiences and it can sense that are very relevant to conditions it encounters in flight. Space flight decreases the virulence of salmonella when it's cultured in that minimal M9 medium. And then when we made that hybrid media and we modulated the ion levels of that rich medium that initially caused salmonella to be more virulent in flight, on the first flight it was three times more virulent in LB media, on the second flight it was seven times more virulent in LB media, so it was even hotter. But yet when we supplemented those ions, okay, in the, in the, in the, in the rich medium to equal what we're in this medium, we completely turned off the virulence of salmonella in flight. So that was really exciting to us. Furthermore, we have, we have now gone a long way in pinpointing. I told you we supplemented with five different ions or minerals. We didn't know which five of those was actually causing the virulence to be decreased or blocked in flight. So because we weren't able to fly a second experiment immediately, we hope to be able to do another follow-up on that very soon, we turned to our friends, the ground-based bioreactors, to determine which one of those five ion supplements were actually mediating um, at least some of the pathogenesis effects we saw in flight. And right now, our evidence suggests that phosphate is probably one of the key ions that's important for that. So we're starting to narrow down which one. It's a lot of fun. It's challenging in terms of, again, making you think very creatively uh, how you can go about designing a hypothesis-driven experiment that provides meaningful science at the end. But there's no question it's doable. We've done it, and others have too. And the really exciting part to us is the, the potential that it holds to translationally advance human health, yes, obviously during space flight, because we're very interested in um, preserving crew health, safety, and integrity to ensure mission success, because they're looking to travel beyond low Earth orbit. They're looking at lunar colonization in the near future and ultimately Mars. And so we need to do everything possible to make sure once the crew gets so far away that it's not, they're not capable of a, a quick return to Earth in case something happens. We need to try and protect them up there. And so we're trying to mitigate the risk for infectious disease for them during long-duration spaceflight. 
But what's really, really exciting to us is we get kind of a, a two-pronged uh, benefit from our research, a double bang for our buck. Because not only are our results translating to the crew to keep them healthy during spaceflight, but they're also translating right back down here to Earth because there are aspects of the spaceflight environment that cells encounter up there that are directly relevant to what they encounter down here on Earth, including environments the pathogens encounter when they infect your body. And when we grow cells th that way, under those conditions, we are finding they are causing disease differently. Again, we're getting this new mechanistic understanding of how these bugs are causing disease that we don't find when we culture them in the lab under the traditional conditions that we normally use. So very exciting to us now is because we can help the crew up there and we can um, look to uh, develop new strategies to treat and prevent infectious disease here on Earth.